Are you ready to unlock the door to your dream home? Well, these tips could save you thousands of dollars when purchasing your first home. And if you stay around to the end, I'll give you that quick bonus tip that you definitely don't want to miss. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kyle Powers here with Haven Real Estate Group at eXp Realty, and I have helped countless number of first time home buyers here in the Manhattan market. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Tip number one, getting pre-approved for a mortgage. I've had so many times where people are like, well, I think I wanna go start looking here and I wanna go do this and I wanna go do that. And I get that all the time. I'm like, okay, pump the brakes a minute. Let's take a look and let's see what you can actually be a pre-approved for, okay? It's pre-approved, pre-qualified, two different things, but essentially getting you the same process. What you're doing is you're going in and looking at your debt to income ratios, you're looking at your credit scores, you're looking at all that stuff, and you're looking with a mortgage broker or a lender here in the area. Again, one of the things that I always recommend with this one is, or I always talk about with this one, is having champagne taste on a beer budget nothing wrong with it right like maybe you're looking at five hundred thousand dollar houses but you can only afford 300. i can still find you a really really nice house for three hundred thousand dollars here in the manhattan market so don't worry about that let's make sure that you are not house poor like that's a real thing have you thought about what you can really afford go ahead and put it in the comments below i'd love to hear from you tip number two know what you want but be flexible. Unless you build your home, you're not gonna find the perfect home. My wife and I, we moved into our house and I was like, okay, if we're getting this house, I'm gonna change this, 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 and I just went down the list of it, right? Get your home in the right neighborhood, the right bones of the house, make sure that's structurally strong, and then you can always go back in and you can either do the updates yourself. I know on my first home that I ever bought, I actually did a lot of the updates myself. I learned a ton of home improvement type things and it was the best thing that I could absolutely do for that. You don't have to check every single box on your list. Know what you want, know what you need. Do you need three bathrooms? Who knows? Do you want a fireplace? That's me, I want a fireplace. And then you may have to give on some of those. If I can get both, fantastic. If I can't, then I'm gonna have to concede on some of those. So be flexible with that. Number three, I'm gonna give it a shameless plug, but here's the thing is work with a professional, work with a realtor that you trust. Too many times, especially in today's day and age when, when all the antitrust laws and all that stuff's going swirling around with the NAR settlement and things that way, Work with a realtor that you trust, somebody that knows the local market, somebody that has been here long enough, and somebody is, that is going to work in your best interest. Not just wants to go out and hang out on their on their boat or hang out on, on the weekends and go in to see you do whatever, right? Like just not focusing on you and, and taking care of your best interests. Have somebody that you know, somebody that you like, and somebody that you trust, because quite honestly, you're gonna be with them quite a bit. They need to be able to be there and help you take care of it. If you're watching this and you don't have a real estate agent, please reach out. I would love to help you out and talk to you, but even if it's not, go with that professional. Tip number four, don't skip the home inspection. I cannot stress this enough. That home inspector is there to literally talk to you and show you what is wrong with the home. I've bought a couple of investment properties and I skipped the home inspection. I've got a personal property, or personal house that we went to, didn't get any inspections. I went in, bought it, I saw it, but I didn't see all of these major things. Started renovating it, I put a tenant in it, lived in it for two years, we started renovating it. Well, I needed a brand new roof. I needed a foundation work. I need all new plumbing. I need all, I mean, it just starts stacking up and stacking up and stacking up. And it's like, holy cow, why did I not do a home inspection? Because all of this would have been there. And whether they would have did anything about it or not, who cares? But I could have gotten money off of the price of the house. I could have negotiated that to be a little bit better of a dollar amount for what it is. You know, and I could have been like, listen, your foundation's falling apart, your plumbing is garbage, your roof is screwed, and done those inspections and actually negotiated on the back end of things to be able to make sure I get the better deal for myself. So even if you're in a multi-offer scenario, do not give up the right. You can give up the right to renegotiate, that's fine, but keep the right to cancel and keep the right to take it as is because that is going to be crazy important for you. Tip number five. Think long term. The biggest thing I always teach my clients is I'm like, okay, what are your goals with this home? And everybody always says, well, what do you mean? Well, are you living in it for three years? Because that's gonna change the way we buy. Are you living in it for five years, 10 years? Or are you like, I'm gonna die in this house, right? 
Any one of those is fine, and I'm good with all of those, but it changes the way we buy. If you're gonna be in and out in three to four years, great, let's find something you can force some equity into so that way when you call me in three years and you're like, hey Kyle, I'm ready to sell, I've done all the things that you talked about, great. Let's get going, let's do this. And you've put about $50,000 of equity into your bank account. So that way when you sell, no matter the market, because you forced appreciation into your home, we can do that. If you're thinking, oh, well, I've got 30 years in this house and I don't ever plan on moving, great. That $10,000 that you're worried about up front isn't gonna matter in the long term. Is it the right home, in the right neighborhood, in the right area? Is it structurally sound? That $10,000 over 30 years is very, very, very minimal, like pennies every single month is what all of that changes for you, right? Be able to know what your long-term goals are with the home. Again, if you use me, I'm gonna coach you through all of this and have these conversations. Life changes, I get that, but we also need to know like, okay, where are we going to be and have some sort of forethought whenever we're buying, not just buying and, and just buying whatever's there because it's there, that's how you get in trouble. Two part bonus tip for you. When you're buying your first home, find something that needs a little bit of work. Now I'm not saying anything that needs to go totally redone, foundation, all that kind of stuff. But new cabinets, new paint, new new flooring, uh, new countertops, like that goes so far and it's a very minimal amount of money that is going to increase your equity in that side of it. So getting that stuff that you can force equity into it. And if you're curious about equity, check out one of my other videos about that, but it can force equity into that particular property. If you are enjoying this stuff, comment below in, in the comments and say free guide and I will go ahead and send you an email and with my free first time home buyer's guide. That way you can kind of go through all of this stuff. And it talks about everything from checklist from start to finish. Uh, and you can get all that information there. So go ahead and reach out, comment below, put a free guide and I'll get that sent over to you guys free of charge, no strings attached, just sent it over to you for an email. And then also, if you are enjoying this content, I am going to have the most common mistakes of first home buyers and how to avoid those. So stay tuned for other videos, that way we get you taken care of there. If you have any other questions or anything else about buying your first home or buying your dream home, put in the comments below or reach out. I'm here to help. My phone number is 785-477. 5485. My email is Kyle Holmes for sale mhk.com. I want to help you and I want to make sure that you are making the right decision in buying your first home because it's not necessarily for everyone. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Do I love it? Absolutely. I think it's the best thing over renting all day long. However, it's not always the best move. So if you guys enjoy this content and you are have any questions or anything, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that little bell so you get notified of any future content. Give us that like because it does help us grow the channel. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.